So today we're going to look at what happens when we have a, a current carrying wire inside a magnetic field. And it's very similar, actually it's pretty much identical to the, um, the, the last thing we talked about. Um, where if you imagine uh, you have a current moving through a wire, right? And current is just moving charges. And so just like with moving charges, you're going to get this little magnetic field that's going to be around the wire. And when that magnetic field in, in, enters another magnetic field, for example, here's a permanent magnet here, well, there you're going to have two magnets. Those magnets are going to interact with each other, and, and the net result is you're going to get some kind of force acting on the wire. And just like before, to figure out the direction, we're going to have to be using our right-hand rule. Before we do that, though, let's just look at kind of the direction of that force. Uh, sorry, not the direction, the kind of the, the math of, of this. So the equation is going to be uh, BIL, uh, where again, B is the magnetic field, I is the current, and L is going to be actually the length of wire inside the field. And uh, I'll give you an example of what I mean by this in a second. Um, again, notice that it is perpendicular, just like before. So for example, uh, if we have our field, if we have our charge moving at an angle here, what we want to do is find the value that's perpendicular to that field, the amount that's actually perpendicular to it. Um, and I, actually, I guess I can talk about the length here. So notice, you know, maybe our wire extends beyond, you know, it goes up and down and so forth. But the L that we care about is not the total length of the wire, just the length that's inside the magnetic field. And hopefully that makes sense to you because, you know, if it's longer, the, the only part that's being interacted on is the part that's inside the field. This, these charges over here, these are not interacting with the field, so there's not going to be a force on it. By the way, this equation here, this comes from our last equation. If you take a look, we have, remember, BVQ. Okay, but what is velocity? Velocity is just like a distance over time, right? And in this case, our distance here, our dis distance is just defined as that length, right? How far it's going. So we could write this as length over time times Q. But remember, what is Q over T? Well, Q over T is simply current, right? So notice we get that same exact equation here. So let's go ahead and do an example of this. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video, see if you can solve this one on your own. Okay, so once again, we're just gonna be using F equals B perpendicular to IL. Uh, in this case, it says it's already perpendicular. Uh, I didn't draw this out, but imagine, for example, we have a current going this way, a wire going this way, and maybe we have a B field X, meaning it's going into uh, into the page here. Okay, and you know maybe the whole length of our wire is two meters, but the length inside is going to be somewhat smaller, right? So in this case, it's going to be just 30 centimeters. So when you use our BIL here, we're going to go 4 times 5 times our length, and we'll just be using 0.3. So in this case, we're going to get 6 newtons for our force acting on it. Okay, what about the next one? Uh, well, it's saying, all right, let's say the force is up. Okay, it's pushing up. Let's say this wire, you know, it has a mass to it. Gravity is trying to pull it back down. Well, what if we want this wire to levitate? Okay, well, if we want it to levitate, we simply want our magnetic force to equal our gravitational force. So we want six Newtons to equal gravitation, which would be mg. Okay, divide by 9.8. What's that going to be? About 0.6, I don't know, 6.1, something like that. Um, that's going to be the mass of levitation. All right, so again, uh, direction. We're going to have our second right-hand rule. And actually, you know, this, again, the numbers, it's just sequentially as I'm introducing them, but there is no, like, number two is this, okay? It's just how I'm, the order I'm going in. Uh, and essentially, this is really almost the exact same as the last right-hand rule. Um, remember, 
current is defined as, uh, con our conventional current is defined as a moving positive charge. So our thumb, last time we had the velocity of a, on a positive charge. In this case, we're just talking about the direction of the conventional current. So our thumb points in the direction of the conventional current. Uh, a B field is going to be the same with our fingers, and then our palm is going to be representing the direction of force. Now, because we always think in terms of conventional current, you don't need to worry about the left hand rule or what happens with negative charges. Of course, remember the actual movement of charges are electrons, so um, that's something to think about as well. All right, so here's a few examples for you to do. Um, and actually, I'm going to throw in one last example. Let's imagine we have two permanent magnets, a north and a south. Okay, and I'm just going to place a wire, say, this way. Okay, let's say the current in the wire is going this direction. And I want you to go ahead and try to figure out the direction of the force on all of these problems. So take a moment to see if you can go ahead and solve this. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, again, we're gonna take our thumb, we're gonna point in the direction of the current. Now in this case, our B field's dotted, so that means it's coming out of the page. So I would move my hand, rotate it to look something like this. And my net direction then on the wire would be this way. So the force on that wire is gonna be moving to the right. We'll do the same thing with this next one. Okay, notice again, my thumb's gonna follow the current. I'm gonna point it up this time to follow the, the B field. And again, the force is gonna be moving in this direction this time. What about these? Well, I1 and B, notice that I1 and B are parallel. Actually, I2 and B are parallel. So in this case, there's gonna be no force on the, on the, uh, the wire. And then let's look at the last one. So this one, we have our I going this way. We have our B field going this way, so we follow our hand. And actually, this is perfectly laid out. I don't need to change it. This force is coming out, okay? And you could write that as the positive Z direction if you want, or just simply saying out of the page. So if this was my wire and I had my current moving this way, the wire itself would actually be thrust upwards towards you. Okay, how about this one down here? Again, when it's moving at an angle, sometimes your hand will work, sometimes it won't. Let's go ahead and just change this. So I'm gonna change it so that the current is perpendicular. So in other words, I'm looking at it as if the current was moving in this direction. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my hand, I'm gonna move it in the direction of the current. Okay, and in this case, I'm gonna to have to rotate this to go that this way, right? So you're looking at the back of the hand, which means the palm is gonna be moving into. So in this case, the force is gonna be moving into, or you could write that as the negative Z direction. Okay, last one, this one we have a, a south and a north. So this is a really good question because you have to, it's kind of like a double question. You have to think of it in two ways. So the first thing you have to do is imagine what direction is the magnetic field? So to do that, remember, we're just gonna stick our compass in the field and see what our compass does. Well, compass, remember the arrow of our compass is the north pole of our compass. And our north pole of our compass is gonna always point towards magnetic south. And so the B field in this field is gonna be pointing to the left here. So that's gonna be my B field. It's pointing to the left. Now I can go ahead and use my right hand rule to figure out that direction. Uh, my current, my thumb's gonna follow the current going up this way. My B field is following, my fingers are following the direction of the B field and the palm is pointing up or out, sorry. So the force is gonna be pointing out or positive Z direction, okay? So in other words, this wire would, again, just like that previous problem, it's gonna be moving up towards you. So let's take a look at a couple of applications of this. So the first one we're gonna look at is a motor. Um, so again, imagine if you have a current moving through a wire, and then we have two, let's say, permanent magnets here that create a magnetic field. Well, as the current moves through the wire, 
there's going to be a force on that wire. So it's going to start to push that wire. And on this one, it's going to say push it up. On this one, it's going to say push it down. And so depending on the strength of the current we have moving the wire, we can then cause this wire to say start rotating and start moving around. And you know, you could attach that to a, a car, attach that to a wheel, you get, get it to start spinning. One of the interesting things to notice is as this moves, let's say it moves 180 degrees. As it moves 180 degrees, notice you're gonna have the current moving in a certain direction and the force is gonna be opposite the direction of motion it just moved. So in other words, this is gonna move 180 degrees and then it's gonna push it back in the opposite direction 180. So if this were our true motor, it would just flip back and forth and back and forth. However, we take care of this, we fix this by essentially flipping the current. So in other words, if we have the current moving counterclockwise here, when it rotates 180 degrees, we're gonna flip the direction of that current. So it's always flowing in this counterclockwise direction. And that's how we can take care of this, uh, not have our motor stop, but it's just gonna keep rotating around and around. So get in one last final application. This is gonna be a speaker. Um, if you ever open up a speaker, you'll notice there's two things. You're going to have this wire, this coil of wire here, and then you're going to have a, a permanent magnet. And again, what happens is you're going to send current through the wire. And as we just noticed, since there's a, a current and a wire next to a permanent magnet, there's going to be a force acting on that wire. And what you can do is if you can control this current, you can cause the force, say, to go one direction or if you reverse the current, you can cause it to go the other direction. So in other words, you can, by changing the direction of the current, you can cause this cone to start vibrating back and forth. And if you tune this, so it's perfectly tuned to the, the sound or the music that you want, you can get the vibrations that can create that sound wave, the sound waves that you're trying to make. So anyway, that's how a speaker works. Um, Remind me tomorrow, I'll go ahead and show you some real life examples of both the motor and the speaker and kind of the, the ins and outs of the two.